Heidi Ho YouTube. I am going to show you the next part of doing these these uh, trays. Um, this is a bit of surface ornamentation on the edge. You can see here. I haven't com completed it because I wanted to show you the method with just this last bit we're going to finish. I was feeling rather mermaidy today, so I found in my stash of stuff this bag of blue shell pieces that have a hole through the center and I found some little kind of pearlish pearlescent looking little beads and this is a very simple thing to do um, so I thought I'd start with simple Sorry about that. So, my needle went MIA anyhow um, I have a length of this is actually upholstery thread that I have um, threaded onto this needle it is a tan colored upholstery thread that Grant bought somewhere and it's the perfect color for the um, basketry because it blends right in. So the way that you would start this would be to from the from the back side you're going to take a a, uh, you're going to push it through this first this edge coil, which would be the first coil. You're going to push it through at about that point. Then you're going to pull it through until you've got a little bit of working tail here, a couple inches. You're going to go back to the back again. like so. So you basically you've taken a stitch through the front here. That's what you're doing. And you simply tie this off. So you make a I make a triple knot. One two Wait a second. I'm, I've got my arms wrapped around this um, tripod, so it's making making things a little difficult. Three. There we go. And then you'll trim this off at some point. Anyhow, so now you're ready to start sewing on your decorations. Let's see here. I'm going to move this closer. All right. So you come back up basically through that stitch that you had taken, right in that same area. Oops, that's too far. Right about there. And you got to be careful. Stuff, you know, thread likes to knot up at the back, so don't pull it too fast or you'll end up with these weird little loops, strange things. So anyhow, now what you want to do is take one of your shell pieces like this, the front on this happens to be the the side that's got the um, striations in it. The smooth side is actually the back side. And the reason why it's the back side is because these shells all have a natural curve to them. Each little piece, some of, some of them have a very exaggerated curve like this does. Um, but they all have a natural curve and what I like to do is I like to make sure that it, the curve is it's curved side down because that way when you take the stitch like I'm going to show you here let's see this one's that one's not quite all the way through okay so you take the stitch then you're going to take another um, you're going to take your little um, pearlescent bead. Put that one on next. And it likes to get hung up. Just take your time. Don't get, don't trip about that. Kind of pull your thread up a little bit so that you're, you're hovering right over where you had taken, where you'd pulled the thread up in the first place. And now you go, you skip that little bead, but you go through the blue shell underneath. And your pearlescent bead ends up holding the shell down, like so. What I like to do is sort of manipulate it so that it's so that the hole is 
sideways instead of facing up. It makes it a little bit nicer. So anyway, you can see how see how this naturally curved shell just curves right around the edge of the of the piece. I like that. Um, some of the shell pieces are very pronounced the curve and it's just real pretty. So anyhow there's your first your first uh, um, little p uh, shell piece. Now you'll go over and from going through this outer loop um, through this outer loop from behind because that's where your thread is. It's behind so you want to come up from behind. You're going to move over a half an inch or so. Take a stitch up and now you're ready to place your next shell. And I'm going to use this shell right here. And you want to try to vary the color of the of your beads. If you if you're working with multicolored beads like I am here, you don't want to place, you know, three white ones in a row or three pink ones in a row. You want to try to vary the colors. So I'm choosing a kind of a almost a whitish lavender to go next to the pink one I just did. And you pull it through. And you want to keep some pretty good tension on that. You, you want to make sure you don't have any weird loops on the back and that the tension is pretty good. So now we're going to take another stitch through the back, up through that last um, coil that's around the edge. Pull it nice and tight. And place another one of these puppies. I think I'll use blue this time. And and the the curve just falls so nicely around the edge of this thing. Um, I I found these uh, little shell pieces at a dollar store somewhere a few years ago, and I think the little opalescent pearl pearlescent beads are from Joann's probably and I've used these little shell pieces for all kinds of stuff but this is the first time I've used them for the basketry in part because I haven't made basketry since I bought these things but um, I probably wouldn't even have thought of it if I couldn't if it wasn't for the fact that I couldn't find the other things I was looking for. I was looking for different kinds of beads. And these just happened to pop into view when I was out in my horror of a craft room. Absolute horror. And uh I thought, shoot, you know what? I'm gonna use them. So about I think I've placed four now. About every third or fourth one, you want to turn it to the back. And you want to take a, a you want to knot um, your thread. And what I do, see if I can show you this. You can see that there are um, stitches, long stitches underneath here. I just go to the stitch that's right previous to the one I just took, and I knot um, I knot my thread into that, like so. And I pull it up as pull the knot up as close to the you know up as close up to the stitch as I can, and there we go, so I'm ready to keep working. I think I've got enough room for maybe maybe two more small ones here, so I'll do one here and let's see I think I'll use I think I'll use. this one and I'm going to use white this time and I go through the blue shell skipping the skipping the pearlescent bead and then I'm going to take one more right here I think I'll do a smallish chip Try to get it right between the last two. And I think I'm going to use this small little chip here, like that. And I've got a green here that I'm going to use, greenish color. And we're going to go through here, back down through just the shell part. And I have now completed the tray, the ornamentation for the tray. 
V super simple, very simple, but effective. You know, it would look really neat in a... Uh, it would look neat if you had a beach house or you had a ocean theme in a room. It would be real pretty. So now all you do is you tie it off on the back, much like um, I showed you um, three stitches ago. I just go through, go up underneath um, the thread itself on a previous stitch. I make a knot like so, pull it tight, then you just go up to, to the front and you pull it tight, always making sure that you don't have any weird little loops. You want it to be nice and flat all the way around. And that looks good. And then all I do is I take my jacked up Mallory scissors and I trim that. And I believe there was another piece back here that needed trimming. Um, here we go, right here. Let's trim that a little bit. And voila! Okie dokie. So here we go. Done and done. Isn't that pretty? I think I might do the same um, technique for one of the coasters. Maybe two of the coasters. And then I can I can put this on my Etsy site as a, you know, a tray and then two coasters as a set for some price. I don't know what it would be. So anyhow, um, that is just a real, real simple um, start to how you can do ornamentation. Um, you can also do, you can um, add beads as you're sewing the basket together itself. You, you know, you'll string a bunch of beads onto your, onto your string and then place one with each pine needle as you place it. You can do that. Um, I kind of, first, when I'm working on a basket that's curved, doing it in that method where you place the beads as you actually make the um the basket that works really well but when you're doing something flat just doing the piece finishing the piece first and then go, going back and sewing on beads it's really effective and it's really fast so um there you go i will show you more variations on this whole theme i went out and cleaned a bunch of pine needles and i think i'm going my next basket that i'm going to show you is a curved one so i will come back and show you how you go from a flat tray to a curved basket bye bye youtube